why I overstayed a film was shot in front of a live studio audience. Welcome to episode 49 of Flyer State of Film, guys. And this episode is brought to you by Warby Parker Glasses. You can go to warbyparker.com slash flyover, and they will send you five free pairs to try on at home. So go to warbyparker.com slash flyover, and you can get five free pairs at home. Now, as usual, I got my boys with me, my co-pilots, Brian, Joe, Yusef. Episode 49, guys. Have a Cheers. sip. How you guys doing? I'm good, man. I own a pair of Warby Parkers, and I love Warby. They have the actually, and this is not an ad, the best customer service I've ever dealt with. This Warby. is an ad. You said you're wearing, wearing a pair of Warby Parkers. pair of glasses right? for almost a decade. <laughs> <laughs> not as Yeah, long. this, my pair fell off a Warby Parker truck. That's, that's the ones that I'm using right now. <laughs> Perfect. I didn't want to have to cut you off and say, meet you. Well, guys, we're on episode 49. We are on day, I don't fucking know, quarantine. There's not no, much. No, we don't use that word here, man. Oh, I, was I was on the phone. I was on the phone. In real life, I was on the phone with the, uh, like a, like someone life? I work with. In real life. Where are we right In the now? real world. I was on the phone with like someone I, I, like someone I work with across the country. And they're like, we're two months to quarantine. And I was like, oh, we're three months of quarantine. And they were like, she had a heavy Australian accent. And I was like, oh, where are you like from? She's like, Oakland, California. I'm like. Oh, yeah, so we're on the same time quarantine. I'm sorry. <laughs> Racist. Yeah, well, there's not much movie news going on other than people are, I guess, clamoring to get in the theaters. Mm. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I think it's the stupidest fucking idea. You're not going to theaters until at least end of the summer. Yeah, I don't, I I don't even know if, do it the if there's no vaccine. It seems harsh, you know what I mean? Like, But I, I have to say, I want to see Mulan. And if they That's put what Mulan I was in the theater. About. I'll wear a fucking mask and I'll go to the fucking theater. <laughs> well, you know what? Why don't I? I saw a couple of uh, people that listen to this talking about how, in, like, their states and uh, cities that have drive-throughs that are starting mm-hmm. to open up now. I was gonna say, why I are mean, we here, the drive-ins? Yeah, I mean, the Austin, rad. bring back the drive-in. I'm in yeah. on that. I'm all in. Uh, Austin has one, I know for sure, but here in San Antonio... I wouldn't pay 20 bucks to rent a movie to watch in my house with my family, but I'd pay 20 bucks to put my family in a car and watch it in a drive-in. You know what I mean? Well, they were saying... uh, uh, Well, Yusuf was saying in Houston, I know that in Texas, they were doing um, stand-up shows where, you know, it's just like a drive-in, but one guy's on stage and they just turn into like 107.9, your car's... And it just relays in your car, so you can go and do stand up. So there's like ten stand up cool. doing stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I've never heard of that. No, there's a uh, drive in I've I would go to every summer with some friends out in PA called Shankwellers. And it's like sixteen bucks, you get a double feature. You know, except yeah. now you just really truly say like, you know, you have to be in your car or like in front of your car, like a little more distant, like you just you know, say they had a capacity of a hundred people. Let's say you just say the capacity is fifty cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it. I think the one in Austin has three lots. One has twenty five cars, and the other two have ten cars. Yeah, this is small. Spider Man. Well, I mean, that's another thing they could do is open up. You know, but only but like every other seat. But still, it's like the difference of you're sitting there for a long time. Everybody's yeah. in a closed in area. You're all breathing. Like you watch those maps, the fucking like 
it just it just goes out. You know what I mean? And if you sit next yeah. to somebody, even six feet, if you're sitting next to each other for two hours, I'm telling you, your fucking microbes are intermingling, baby. And <laughs> those fucking so and those fucking uh, carpet walls just yeah. absorbing oh, yeah. all those well, you get, all those fucking and any uh, place honestly. that has HVAC systems. Then you're talking about the recycled air and everything. Like I'm not saying that that stuff's obviously top of the line. A lot of places are great. And I, I know they have filters and this, that, and the other, but it's just like, you're still, you, it's like taking an unnecessary risk, you know? Yes. Would you um, die? The question is, would you die for a Mulan. fucking movie? No. For Mulan. Well, for Mulan, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'll oh, you would die, die for Mulan? I don't know, man. There's just so much I'm just saying, I would wear a mask. I, would, I wouldn't be, if they, if I felt like they opened up with the right precautions in place and you got like every other seat open and in, Masks are required, and I, I don't know. I'd probably go. Well, I think how do you just do that is if you're like AMC, right? You have the automatic, uh, you select your seat. You just pre-gray out like a, yeah. a sections where you're at so people can't even flirt with you the idea. They open in San Antonio. There's a local chain called Santicos or whatever the fuck it is, and they didn't do that shit. They were just three thousand people came in, and I don't know what the fuck. Is gonna I mean, I guess if that. it's up to you, if you want to risk it, there's. I mean, it's yeah. up to you at that point. You want to stay home. So I mean, but it's not. It's not up to us. It's like if you're fucking keeping yeah, the spread alive. Mm-hmm. I saw the goofiness. Um, the people were complaining of like it's gonna be uh, like wait. they're gonna. They're going to test, you know, that infrared heat of your body to see if you have a fever and all that, like a test, a TSA test training. It's a lot, but honestly, if your team wants to do it, I have no problem with that. Saying, like, okay, you're just trying to figure a way to adapt. Like, I think my whole thing is if they do stuff like this, I'm not willing to die for Mula. I don't, there's not one movie coming out that I think I'd be willing to get, risk it for, Black Widow. Um, but I thought Mulan was coming out on Disney Plus, and I saw they pushed it to July to hopefully get it in theaters. And it's like, yeah, but you got Hamilton now. Yeah, I feel like you would have made maybe more money if you VOD it. Nobody this. gives it any. They gonna get a bunch of new subscriptions off Hamilton. No way. <laughs> Some wine moms. They're gonna get like. I have the, a handful of fucking what? wine moms, and that's excited. it. I got excited because so I got ESPN Plus, and I'm like, oh, I get Disney Plus free thing. Mulan comes out in like a week, and I look, and I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I oh, don't fuck it. I'm not fucking using this. Yeah, I, that's why it's so dumb. I worked oh, at the doctor's office, and I had like, to go to the doctor a couple times, and like, that's a thing. Like, taking your temperature at the door is something that doctor's offices have been doing for two months now. You know what I mean? Like, I've been the office I work at, and something that I had to go to for other shit. All taking your temperature when you walk in the door and stuff. Um, I just, so, I, so dumb that, like, speaking of, like you said, all the money and all that is. Uh, I was saying, I think it's so dumb that, like, all the money and stuff that it is, um, like, Universal being like, because Trolls 2 made so much money, we are going to try to restructure our model. It's like, yeah, because every parent was like week one of quarantine and they were like, yeah, we have $20 to spend on a movie. Yeah. Speaking of that, another news item that I thought was hilarious. Like, you just, like, the idea is there that trolls made good money because people are desperate for just new content to plot their kids down in front to, in front of cut to Jeffrey Katzenberg who tried to launch Quibi and people are fucking locked nice. in and he's like oh the problem is the quarantine yeah quarantine really fucked our launch that sucks yeah, yeah, that's, yeah a bunch of content. people stuck in their house desperate for new content the people that made tiger king a household <laughs> name aren't looking for shit to watch yeah like god what a fucking moron like hbo premium opportunity to launch your fucking content like never has there been a moment more tailor-made for a society of people with low attention spans who are locked in their fucking house and they're giving like a three month three month free subscription and nobody wants it. They're like, I'm going to care less. <laughs> you can keep it. I mean, has the Reno nine, have the Reno 911 episodes started coming out yet? I could see them maybe know. get a bump from that if they don't go belly up before they come out. HBO but isn't this thick? dropped their whole catalog on like every platform for free and was like, hey, here's a taste. Yeah. And they still But, uh, but their, their, uh, their stick is like, it's like short 
bites. So is Reno going to be like three minutes, four minutes? So well, Reno gonna... already was broken up like that anyway. The episodes are basically all vignettes as is. You just yeah. separate them. You know what I mean? You just like each, you know, instead of being a uh, three, three minute bits spread out yeah, across yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. 30 minute episode, it's like one 10 minute segment, you know, whatever. Yeah. I, I saw Quibi be compared to like trying to, you know, be like, oh, look at TikTok and all that. It's like TikTok also took like, we were seeing sponsored ads for that shit for like two plus years before they let. Also, before TikTok people like is a in. Chinese psyop to steal our information. That's yeah. so. It's a conspiracy theories. Oh boy. And, and I mean, so there's that and, to worry about. Also, it's user so, generated content. It doesn't cost anything, so it's all profit. So you can't compare Quibi <coughs> to TikTok at all. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like they spent four, I think the number was something around like $470 million on just advertisements for Quibi. So, like, that in itself, you're just like, the fuck's happening? All they had was the names of people attached. They never talked yeah, about what Kendrick. was going on the fucking channel. And then it just came out. And they were like, but all these famous people. Yeah, well, if you cut a famous person a check, they'll be happy to produce some shit for you because they already got their money and it doesn't matter if it succeeds. <laughs> dude, dude, if they cut a famous person a check, they would do – a sequel to a movie that does not need a fucking sequel. That's almost no, a yeah. news item. I mean, they obviously cut Stallone a check to say Demolition Two, Demolition Man Two is coming. That's why yeah. I thought a great topic would be: What's a movie that you think should get a sequel? Now, I personally love Demolition Man Two or Demolition Man, and I do. I'd be interested. I'd check it out. I couldn't help myself. I think Demolition Man is the best Stallone movie that's not called Rambo or Rocky. So yep. I would have to see it. But what yeah, is but the movie did you see I, that I said nine, Josh Gad is going to be in another movie? What? <laughs> <I'm just talking laughs> <about Rob Schneider? laughs> Josh Gad's going to be in a movie? He's trying to stop on your seat. On your Sorry. <laughs> Too late. I already, we already did it. <laughs> We already segued. Yeah, that was a late but since you're so happy to pipe up Joe, why don't you tell us what's a movie you think should or I don't know should not? What is this question again? Get a sequel? Both. Yeah. Yeah. So both. Are you both? I, we so can okay. talk about. Why two. not? Uh, my one. My one answer is more of just something I would love to see, and I know there's too many, and we could just give it a rest for years on end. But I would love to see a Raimi. Spider-Man 4, but, like, today of, like, an age-older Peter Parker and, like, play that out and, like, still live in that world? Yeah, maybe talk Look about that. that. He's just baiting TJ with this one. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, no, no I, I, I actually think that would be rad. I think Spider-Verse kind of opened up the, the idea, and especially, same thing with Venom. We're talking about... Like, we got so many weird realities going on with Spider-Man. We don't know what's going to be happening with Spider-Man. You could definitely do, just like with Halloween and Terminator, why not? Fuck it. Just co go back to the Raimi universe. There's room for, mul I mean, yeah. there's room for multiple Jokers at one time. There's room for multiple fucking uh, Spider-Man at one time. I think you can do a standalone, why not? Yeah, I, no, I just think that world lends its better, self better to be like, here's an old, you know, old man Spider-Man or whatever it's called. He was an old uh, man Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. He already was. Be, but now he can be age appropriate. And, um, and compared to like how people dream cast like the bat, like Batman, like Keaton's Batman to be yeah. like, let's do a Batman beyond. Like I actually don't think it would work in that setting ever. Uh, my bad pick is I hope to never, ever see a sequel to It Follows. Um, yeah, it makes no fucking sense. It's just a nice, like, solid, contained movie. But I know somewhere someone wrote a fucking script and is trying to be like, this was a hit. <laughs> yeah. I think and that's I why this question, I think the, the, the reverse side of this, a movie that you don't want a sequel to, is so much easier. Like, basically, any great movie, just don't make a sequel to it. Just leave it alone. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, but the argument is, like, like uh, an Indiana Jones type movie, uh, somebody could have said, "Oh, I don't want a fucking sequel," and then you got all those sequels that are fucking amazing. Even Mission I guess Impossible. I was thinking about like standalone movies that are like don't have any sequels. No, I know, like, but I'm saying like well, when they when they came out first, the singular one, somebody could have made the argument to never make a sequel. Yeah. So you know, it's a double edged. 
goes in. Well, yeah, sure. For every failures we've seen, yeah, you get a Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and I wouldn't want to uh, give that one up. How, but... how long was it in, uh, before um, T two and before uh, Terminator one? It was like eighty five to ninety two. Yeah, eighty four yeah, like to ninety. Or so. yeah. I mean, that's I mean, so six or seven something. years. Yeah. That kind of reminds yeah. you, like along the lines. What I mean, obviously. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a lot of failures that you're like, yeah, I don't want that fucking thing. And one of them that I really don't want uh, is uh, and and every now and again, you somebody's in the internet fucking asking for it, and that is a sequel to True Lies. Oh, oh, that's yeah. a very very fucking. I, that's the thing I used to want, but I think I'm. I think like. I'm done with that now. <laughs> like the the reason why it works is like because the marriage is on the rocks. Like this yeah. this fucking sleazy guy trying to hit on the wife. Like but also it's such a, a part of it now. Yeah, it just so, hits at the right time too. Like yeah, it was but, made at it was made when it should have been made. Now, will you get like a Jamie Lee Curtis who was a little bit older, a little damaged, <laughs> probably an alcoholic, maybe <laughs> someone that like killed Arnold at some point? I mean, it hasn't been done before. So well, I think no. I think now, she totally all, now they're both way character? too old to do it. There's nothing. What's interesting to see? I don't want to see Red. Like they already made the movie Red oh, about yeah. old people coming out of retirement to be spies. So I don't need and that. That wasn't bad. Carmen. No, it wasn't, wasn't bad. bad. I love bad. that. And they made a bad sequel. Bruce Willis. Um, the side. sequel was fine with me because it had Brian Cox in it again. You know what I mean? Like if you put Brian Cox in a movie, I'm like, yep, this is a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> And the sequel that I don't want to that I want to see is uh, Dread from um, 2012. I want oh, more Carl uh, Urban. Carl Ur- yeah. Of Carl Urban, yeah. absolutely. I want more Carl Urban under that helm helmet because since he they smartly enough con- contain it to that building only, like they have an entire fucking world to yeah. explore in a sequel, so you can you can pretty much showcase anything um, and and. Him being a, a police officer, his sequels are endless. Like, there's always going to be a case six working yeah, on. There's always something else you can do with it. Absolutely. Can I ask a question? I guess. Uh, do you guys think that sequels that the movies that start out that don't have planned sequels always end up having the better sequels? Oh, yeah. So not always, like, but most not more always, like... but most of the time, like. <laughs> Like a movie that we watch, you know, you watch and you're like, oh, yeah, that's great. And it's like, oh, shit, they're going to make a sequel of it. And it wasn't planned. It was done because it was a hit, like your, your Alien or things like that. It depends. It feels like, it feels like that's true if they give enough breathing room between the first one and the second yeah. one. But if they get hyped up because the first one's so successful and they try to pump out a sequel really quickly, then the answer would be no. Well, look at Alex. Oh, no, yeah. Bad. Yeah. Look at the five billion dollar movie of the Avatar sequels. Oh yeah, we're oh, we're, we're we're journeying for. It's pretty. I'm I'm pretty excited for this to actually convert to an all Avatar podcast when those movies start coming out. Because I mean, that's going to be what else is there going to be to talk about? It's going to be like I can't wait for movie theaters to not be open and James Cameron to be like, <laughs> oh man. No, but I but I prefer a, a movie that like had like a great showing and has a huge fan base and then they were like you know what we have another story in there over uh like an amazing spider-man where they're like force feeding like things they're gonna do in the future like him walking through the laboratory and the no and the reason to do origins on any of these villains because you can see they just came out of this lab so no big Fucking deal hell. we just slapped them we slapped a, a costume on someone but yeah that's go. still not as bad as uh, Batman versus Superman with the fucking logos. As an yeah. <laughs> I remember like seeing that in the theater and being like, "Wow, we're we are in trouble here." <laughs> <laughs> like the fucking logos. <laughs> Design them shits. <laughs> oh, guys, like you don't understand how long those also fucking take to develop. Like those had to go through rounds of revisions. Those were polished. <laughs> uh, like uh, some DJ, art director was like, "I need four this. looks." Uh, for me, I, I stuck in the '90s. I was like the original. Uh, Good, that's okay. Because mine from the '90s too. Yeah. So basically, what I realized is the '90s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, and then you went dread. So fuck you. Um, fuck you. <laughs> a movie that I that I wanted to see a sequel of at like the time. I actually thought there was a sequel on for the longest time. Um, is Conehead. It's just something about it, and also like the crew behind the writing and doing like. Uh, kind of like along his lines, like Wayne's World 2. Probably isn't a story you could do, but with that 
that open world. Of course, you could probably come up with something with Beldar and his family and oh, shit like yeah. that. You could do another generation of Coneheads now, you know, you yeah. have the daughter with her kids and like there, well, you know, daughter. you could do a whole story like that's like an analog about second and third generation immigrants and stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's yeah. stuff, there's stuff there to mine for sure. And, there, and like incorporating all the new SNL cast that's always being revised and brought in new people all the time. I mean, you, you don't never know who you're going to get bringing old people back to that's oh. all, forever for years. I, I thought see that. Yeah, Dan Agrini's a patient. Being... Yeah, Davidson reprising a role as a as the uh, Chris Farley boyfriend. Yeah, <laughs> or, like, that's all not. he plays. Yeah, or they have a son and like he runs away or something like that. So it could be based around like her and Chris Farley's kid, even though it's not a picture. R.I.P. to the fucking legend. I mean, um, oh, Phil Hartman's in this movie too. Yeah. Oh damn! The man. whole movie is like a murderer's row. Every, not only every cast member, but like every role is filled with somebody from SNL or yeah, like a comedian. Sinbad. There's no like Drew Carey is like a is in it yeah. as like a taxi cab guy. Like every role, it, it's it's crazy. Last time I watched it, I couldn't believe how many people yeah. were in it. Well, let Especially me ask you: Will you pick up? Yeah. Are you trying to watch a It's Pat sequel? <laughs> no. that's topical what's problematic about that that's just a totally uh healthy and uh sensitive character yeah, in I the remember 2020s, my, mom, maybe. my mom let me rent that movie and she was trying <laughs> to explain the skit to me and i was like i don't get it <laughs> it wasn't a good movie either no she was no. like it's terrible it we wasn't walked even the a comedy good skit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's one of the most confusing greenlit movies I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> well, you walk through the comedy like, aisle. Out of everything you had, SNL got on that. their high horse, man. In the nineties, they they did a remember they did a Stuart Smalley movie. Oh, that's <laughs> right. No, I never understood they, that. They one were yet. taking their they were digging big swings, big swings. Um, so Demolition Man is from the nineties. That's the one that inspired wait, this. Like I said, wait, I'm such wait, a big wait, fan. Wait, you got something else? Yeah, just one more. Sorry. This is something no, I feel ahead. like. No, you're good. I feel like it's something they'll do today, just because it's money. There's Disney Plus. They'd make it like a Disney Plus show and a Kendrick starring, even though they've done it six times already. But I know I don't know if there's a sequel to this book, but it's a fucking classic film that I feel like they would do it and do an older version of this character, Matilda. Brazil. That's if they oh. ever did a sequel to Matilda and like, oh, this is older Matilda. Oh, they're already doing Matilda on Broadway now, right? Matilda's no. a Broadway. I mean, not right now, oh, but I think serious. there's a Matilda Broadway show. They already said they already said they're gonna do Matilda. That doesn't oh, is that sense. happening already? Any sense? Yeah. That's like, I mean, unless Danny DeVito comes back. I don't it. remember Danny who got tapped to write it. I saw it on you, uh, you know, on Twitter, right, guys. But we could talk about Miss Honey. Oh day. yeah. I'll talk about Miss Honey any day. What do you got, Brian? Well, I, yeah, like I said, Demolition Man came from the 90s. I wasn't originally inspired by the 90s. And I wanted to think of, like, one of my favorites. And, and I, I just thought, we haven't had a good, a really good disaster movie in a long time. Yeah. And I love, I would love to see, so the super volcano underneath Yellowstone is rumbling. <laughs> we got We got trouble. Time You're to call die. in Harry Tasker, James Bond himself, <laughs> Pierce Brosnan to reprise his role from Dante's Peak. I love Dante's Peak. It's one of the best disaster movies. It got it's everybody thinks that it's the deep impact to Volcanoes Armageddon, but it's the other way around. Volcano sucks. It's a dumb, stupid, like Don't talk about it's, Tommy it's Lee on the level of like way. 2012 and shit. It's it's <laughs> stupid. Fucking Dante's Peak is the one with the hard science. It's got like the realistic shit in it. I like I just, science. I think it's always been underrated. Hey guys, and uh, I think you could bring shirt. it back. Has... Haggard, haggard old Pierce Brosnan coming in. Linda Hamilton's oh, back haggard. in the picture. He's not haggard. He's a beautiful man. You well, dare, he's, he's, I'm just saying. He's when I say pristine. haggard for Pierce Brosnan, I mean he has a beard with gray in it. That's all I mean. Okay. Uh, you know, he still looks like Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> Maybe his hair's longer. He could do longer. Is he? Is he still doing those horrible? push-ups <laughs> yeah bad form still doing the bad form push-ups um you know you can have the grown kids maybe even one of the kids grown-up kids gets killed and that's why linda hamilton and him have to get back into it or something oh, maybe, linda hamilton maybe is back. grandma with the burnt legs comes back i don't know how things <laughs> drive by fruit but anyway I just really like Dante's Peak, guys. <laughs> I've honestly never seen Dante's Peak, and I know that. That's that, fine. It's fun. 
Yeah, no, yeah I, I actually think, like I said, I think it's underrated. I think it got it kind of lost the battle to Volcano, but I think it's the better movie. I got Volcano at a garage sale on VHS, so never saw that. I'm either. privy to Volcano. I, I'll tell you what, Volcano does have the scene where the dude voluntarily stands in lava and like melts, even though like that's not how it would work at all. But like he like melts down to his that. knees while he's like helping other people. That shit's pretty fucking great. I want to see that. <laughs> I love the shit like that because the Dante Peak has back. an old grandma who gets her legs burned off by acid. So don't don't sleep on Dante's Peak either. <laughs> Right. Both have okay. a lot of shots of lava slowly trickling down. Do you have one you don't want? Uh, like I said, this one's harder for me because I feel like my answer is Double just like man. She any said, singled out classic movie that just has always already been good and not had a sequel for a long time. Just like, leave that alone. Don't do anything yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, or like, I think I can't help but think of things that I would go back and never make a sequel to, like Starship Troopers or The no. Matrix. You know, like I would just leave those alone as beautiful. I mean, they're making pieces. four now. I don't well, have good. I don't. They have can good only improve it. To be honest, like, they can't <laughs> harm it any worse. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. Don't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. All right. I don't Is know. Is that it? I think yeah. we ended that topic. No good segue this time. What's next? No, Joe was supposed to take care of that, but of course. Oh Joe. my God, jeez! <laughs> Don't Dude, you hate this, movies this when they have bad books? segues? Are almost like a trope of yeah. this of <laughs> this podcast. Talking about tropes, Joe. What's your topic? Yeah. So, uh, like a week or two ago on Twitter, because there's a new like trending topic now every day that like everyone. Flops onto. There was stuff just like at home on Twitter. Like piranhas. Like piranhas with a small piece of meat falling in the water. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, how uh, I didn't exactly. realize that during this quarantine, I'm finding more often I'm like caught up on Twitter. Yeah. Usually, like, like, I'm like, I need to follow more people because I'm not getting enough new tweets. <laughs> uh, so, Alicia, Alicia, whatever, uh, something, something about article put a tweet out about like what's a uh, Garuso Alicia Garuso I think um what's a what's a trope in a movie or a tv show that you just absolutely can't stand that's like on so unrealistic or just gets under your skin um so I'll start with you guys and we'll circle back to me so there's just so many there's so many I have one in particular that I'll wait to Mine kind of fall into, like, the unrealistic thing, but I get this way about, like, a lot of these movies that fucking come out. Like, I get that there's, they, my whole thing is about, like, there was a, like, I just watched Crawl, okay? Mm. When it first came out, I'm assuming, no, it was a (laughs) single crocodile or alligator in Florida, maybe two, in this, like, father-daughter, like, dramatic fucking story, but no, it turns out it's like this ridiculous 17 alligators and there's no scientific science behind it like it just doesn't make sense why they'd all go to that and they throw a nest in there same shit with shallows like there's a dead whale fucking 30 yards away a shark wouldn't go out of its way to hunt down a 110 pound girl who has a fucking cut in her leg like shit like that if you're gonna make these movies go like piranha style make it fucking stupid and goofy to where there's no reason you can go behind and be like, well, a prano and do that because it doesn't well, make like one way or the other, right? Like pick a side. Yeah, pick either a side. Like, make either side. like make your gritty realistic one alligator like bottle movie yeah. or, or just go like super dumb seven yeah, forty seven alligators meters down. attack it. Like, sure. like John. Yeah, you can't like super you're totally dumb like way dumb. off the map here. But sir, yeah. do you uh, like when they add like a throwaway dialogue to explain what's going on? Like in face off, there's this throwaway garbage to be like yeah i guess i'm in, I'm in for that ride no i mean at some point like yeah but like you can do but face things. off is on the it's on the other side of ridiculous. I guess, yeah yeah i guess the dumb like, ones do it right by having it, like, no, dialogue. that's what i'm saying it went full it, it like it leaned in you know yeah. what i mean you it didn't try to take itself so seriously it knew it was up yeah I'm just and, like, it, and crawls crawls a fine movie it's just one of those things i wish i jump. wish i would have went into it knowing it's more of like a because you can't do that fucking, like, 12 crocodiles, gory deaths, and have a dramatic, like, father-daughter 
he came to my swim meets type of thing behind it. Cause at some point you just, you, cause you, then you block out like the, the ridiculous points of having the, those, those alligators, all just like things like that. Those, I, I, I don't know. Like shallow. It's hard not to feel for Barry Pepper though. Yeah. He could have been a crocodile, man. This is becoming the Barry Pepper cast. We mentioned <laughs> well, Barry Pepper, I was also knows, uh, later is his later career turn. He's playing a lot more redneck character. Like his, he's getting more hillbilly as he gets older. Like his characters yeah. are like way more. Well, my whole <laughs> thing is, if, if you're going to do these movies about a creature and you want to like monsterify him, monsterify him, but if not, hire a fucking scientist to come in and be like, yeah, they wouldn't do that. There's a smarter way to do that. Just, just do that. Spend the extra hey, ten. TJ, day. not every movie can be Lake Placid, okay? See, but that knew what it was. <laughs> but and it had but listen, <laughs> but listen, get ready for a slew of bad virus films oh, that are oh, either yeah. going to be right on the nose or I a metaphor. I saw somebody films. shit talking. It's a. It was a critic I respect, but they were shit talking outbreak, and I will not have it. That's a mm -hmm. fucking great movie. That's, That's a, a great movie. '90s also. fucking banger of a like weird action movie when they didn't know what to do with Dustin Hoffman and I will not stand for the salacious along the no. tropes how long before they do a bat movie like I mean they did that Lou Diamond Bat Phillips did bat movie back in the day but how long before there's like a bat horror monster movie there a horror movie called bats from like yeah. uh, Lou Diamond maybe Phillips. late 90s early 2000s yeah, yep. Peter's Lou Diamond about Phillips one you're talking about so Yusuf what about you what's your trope so I have I have three but one is, um, one is when they're choking somebody in a movie, and their hands clearly are not doing any pressure <laughs> or any tension. They have any no tension in their fingers or anything. They just have their hands, and then they die in like a minute. Like choking somebody <laughs> like takes so long. Oh, it would be so know? it's so brutal and personal. It takes forever. Yeah, I, do you know? I mean, I know. <laughs> Do you know who's great? <laughs> you know who has great choking acting? James Gandolfini in The Sopranos. Yeah, he knows how to I choke. I, you know I, I don't know. I guess like make pressure on your on like your thumb, and then well, you yeah. know. You don't know. Got to go on the larynx with just one thumb, and you're good. But I'm just saying. Think speaking of that, Yusef, when I was like a kid, and I used to watch like Halloween and Jason, all those movies. I. Whenever Michael Myers like throws a head into a dunk and they they go crazy and then eventually they freeze up, and stop, <laughs> I'm like I would do that for like 30 seconds and I'd freeze up to make him think I was done right, and wait right, for him, yeah. let me go and leave and I'd just come back up. Yeah, like, absolutely. That would 100 percent work too. Yeah. Oh, this it's, is a little off topic, but it makes me laugh so much. So we all, several of us watched the terrible Jay and Silent Bob reboot. It was god awful. So bad. but my wife, we we both hated it. But her oh, biggest. Her biggest, my wife's biggest sticking point, was she hated how Harley Quinn Smith did her lazy choke that she kept doing on people. Her whole thing was to come up behind people and do like like a choke. She would come, but she would never lock it in. She did like this, and she, she did, and my my wife was so fucking mad about it. It was awesome. Lock it in. She's like, look, that's nothing. I can break out of that. A Jeez, that's that's some horse shit. I. I just picture uh, her throwing Harley no Quinn Gibson over, has. like a judo throw over his shoulder and just <laughs> drilling her into the mat. That's, that's, like, like, the... that's like choking face. <laughs> well, it's from experience. <laughs> I, I, I also, like, think about what you're saying is when, like, people get hit in the head or something like that by, like, just an object, and they're just like, oh, I guess they're dead. Let me just keep going on. And, like, oh, you just be like, oh, that kind of hurt. Yeah, what are you the, doing? The classic knockout. Yeah, I was watching oh, that yeah, terrible coffee. I was watching that terrible coffee and Kareem on Netflix last oh, night. Oh, that's so bad. Get Just it? Coffee it was on. and Kareem because it sounds like cream, coffee uh -huh. and cream. I didn't no, get I, so you just said it. It just yeah, so it, fucking funny. It just it just was on, and I didn't want to pay attention to anything. <laughs> but he, but that happens in that movie. Anyway, go on, the, baby. What are you? The, what are you the, the other, the other one is because I have OCD and I also have a crippling fear of of waking up and somebody being over me to kill me. So any noise I hear, I wake up because I feel like somebody's breaking into the apartment or the house. So I always check the doors like. 10 or 15 times to have the locks but in movies people come in and out of fucking houses every single time oh, terrible. And nobody locks the doors like it's just <laughs> it drives me crazy to see and people just come in to apartments especially a lot of sitcoms like seinfeld's the biggest offender he's living in one of the worst Perfect. cities 
uh, in the country in terms of like break-ins and, and murders. Especially but at he that always, time, too. And he yeah. just has his front door open on every single time. he didn't have a doorman. On, on Seinfeld, people will buzz up, he'll, and he'll just, he'll be like, yep, and he'll open the door and just yeah. leave it hanging open until they come in. Yeah, and Seinfeld doesn't have, have a thing, doorman though. either. No. When I used to go visit no, my either, buddies, you had to get caught up to an apartment. That was a thing. Like, they would just leave the door open and just, just walk right in. That's yeah, my brother was totally that the city. Yeah. My brother yeah. was <laughs> the apartment did that. But yeah, that's another one. And the last one is uh, and is morning breath. Like, couples waking up in the morning in movies and then just staying in bed talking, like, face to face. When you no. talk, you talk straight ahead. You lay on yeah. your pillow and you talk straight ahead. <laughs> Or you're doing back to back, butt to butt, and not, and you're just barely speaking. <laughs> A you, lot of it's just, just brush those teeth, motherfucker. You have like shitty breath right now. I don't want to talk to you right now. Back in bed. It's I think I think a lot of people in America right now, because of the mask situation, are learning a lesson about their breath. And Dude, good, it's good. Well, it's I hope yeah. they need to learn. It's fucked me so. up a couple of times. I'm like, holy shit, why am I talking so close to people? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> even like even even like in like romantic comedies where like they're drunk one night and they hook up and the next morning they roll over and hook up right away again like that doesn't happen y'all stink from the night before like yeah you know y'all got nasty like the worst taste your mouth your tongue's all white oh, it's <laughs> like oh. having it's and like you when gotta, you just have sex immediately yeah and you gotta you know pee it out too. Like, you gotta pee uh-huh. it out too yeah, morning sex. Out. Morning sex is the most impersonal sex of all. Also, it's like I woke up with something, and if you're game, we'll just do this real quick. Also, there ain't like, no passion in morning sex. That's <laughs> now that we're on the the sex talk, like are like chicks just getting Plan B or like pregnant because they're just like, oh, I'm coming in, yeah. There's a lot of all the time when they hook up. It's <laughs> like oh, oh, like no, and it's like oh, wow, like Time's I don't need like, to see what? the cleanup, what? but like. What? Also, also to uh, to the wall sex. It, I don't think it happens a lot now, but it, it was like a thing in the eighties and nineties where they are both like straight. Like none of them are trying to do an angle; they're like straight. Oh, like they're standing just, up against the wall, yeah, like yeah. no angle. They're just fucking. But they have like, that big dick cool. energy, so that make that work. No, they have a they have a U dick because I'm they're, sure. they're yeah, not they doing an angle. Curve in that shit. There ain't, like the angle is off, a, man. Like they're in a nightclub <laughs> making out when it's at their house. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna, Brian. I'm gonna let you go. Just want to lead into a sub one I had was when people like have sex in a hotel room or hook up so hard that they fall asleep on the floor as if like the sex yeah. lasted six hours. I don't Call get it. Crawl into bed. Come on. <laughs> oh, we got a hotel now, room. Make it on top of the covers. Okay, that that looks like real crazy sex to me. Yeah. Like you didn't bother to pull a cover <laughs> over you. You passed out on the bed naked. That yeah. sells on the floor. That ain't realistic. I don't buy that. <laughs> like in uh, like in reindeer games. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Brian, what's your your pick? And on I, top I, of I, the I, covers <laughs> is wild sex, Brian. I'm right. Dead, like. Man, that, that's passed all I out, this passed out, totally naked now. on top of the covers. I get it. That shit was crazy, but no, on the floor, <laughs> that's a step too bad. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes people go sideways across the bed. Crazy. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so mine was. Uh, this is something that like I, I had pointed out to me, and it is like damn near ruined so many action movies and sequences for me and that is when a overpowered villain has the uh protagonist in a position where they could easily murder them and instead they throw them across the room <laughs> like like the ultimate move to hurt someone in a movie is to throw them 20 feet against a wall or they slide into a wall like no you could just crush his skull because you're so strong that you can throw him 20 feet so since you yeah. have them in your hands why don't you just like crush their skull <laughs> but I, no i guess you'll just throw them across the room instead okay I guess. I love, uh, I love in Austin Powers where like like Scott. I think oh, it's yeah. a sequel. He's like, oh, why don't we just kill him? This is the first. Like, yeah, the first she's like, why don't we just kill him with a cat crapper? I'll get a gun right in my bed, and he's just like, right Scott. now. He's like Scott. 
How about no? That's not how we do things. <laughs> we'll do it together. Get it, It'll be great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like so true though. Like just do it's it. Even like yeah, uh, like um, you got him right there, and you're so obviously so much more powerful than him. Well, even uh, hey, uh, why did you why did you throw him away? Now you put distance between the two of you. You've given him an opportunity to do something to come up with a. You've given him more. I don't understand. Is the oper- is are you not trying to win? <laughs> you know who does yeah, a good job? Like, so? Oh, sorry. You try to use that thing where it's like an ego, like, well, he has to hear himself talk. Well, no, I mean, most evil people or sociopaths get the job done and talk yeah. to themselves afterwards. Right. Like, you're not doing the thing your about right. a like, sociopath is they don't care if you think their plan no. is good. Yeah. They no. already know their plan is good. Exactly. They don't give a fuck they're about so, you at all. <laughs> their ego is so big. They're, they don't even think about you like that. You're I literally mean, just prey. Last action hero, I mean, they didn't really do the throwing thing, but, like, they did it three times where, like, the kid did it, and then they did it, and then the kid did it again. Like, it's good tropes. A really and good then, uh, uh, oh, no, parody on that. I guess oh, I'm so, no, no, sorry. Good parody <laughs> on that. How does it feel, Brian? Oh. I mean, I do the interrupting right. around here. Joe, Fine, man. You know, I was going to say. That's what I do. I make puns, and I interrupt people. That's I was going to say. Uh, with Syndrome the Incredibles does that. He's like, you got me monologuing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My only other one, and actually I just thought of it when we were talking, but I think it is something I definitely think about when I watch, especially older movies, is the like knock someone out to protect them move like it's in demolition man he knocks out sandra bullock to protect her you know a man basically hitting a woman into unconsciousness which with what we know about concussions and cte now is like brutal you know what i mean like if like one time of getting knocked unconscious like that can change your brain structure forever (laughs) That that even goes back to like joe's thing where it's like they always do like the butt of the gun like it's that easy. Like, no, it's yeah. that easy. It's all about the positioning and where you do it. Yeah, like, and also, you cave someone's skull in with a butt of a gun <laughs> like that. Like, you see people <laughs> yeah. getting pistol whipped in movies all the time, too. It's like, have you ever held a forty-five in your hand and how fucking heavy it is? You know what it would be like if you cave, you would cave their fucking face in with that yeah. thing. <laughs> and also, people, like, you don't know their paint on. I was like, if I went to Tony Ferguson, the OC fighter, and tried to cock him on the head, he'd probably look at me like, yeah, what? And I'd be like, ah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you also don't know what about anybody's like, skull thickness or endurance yeah. to pain. <laughs> like, no, nah, everyone's Homer Simpson. Well, they, I feel like they do that a lot with those type of movies, or like the taping up and tying up of someone you're trying to protect, so they wouldn't like the stop talking thing, where it's just like pull the tape, where you gonna scream? Nope. Like, yeah. I, I was like, you know, I got a tongue. I'll push this tape right off my mouth. You put a little piece of tape uh, this big around my mouth. I'll push one. that shit right when they off. Sho- when they shove like a piece of cloth in someone's mouth. That's not hard to push out. Yeah, I'll push that right now. Yeah. I never understood that either. They just sit there with a sock in their mouth and they're like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> the best one is Pineapple Express, though, where they got Danny McBride taped in that chair. He's like, I'm going to flex and bust out. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. Oh, dude. Um, th- that, and they also make fun of that's the best joke in that entire movie is when uh, Franco tries to kick. The front window, <laughs> and, his leg he and he just gets stuck. That's so good. And the Charlie slushy looks like it's blood everywhere. <laughs> so good. Or they, um, you do it too good with uh, which just happens a lot of movies where, like, you see in a movie where, like, a single shot, someone's just dead right away. Like, it does. Yeah. There's no like. Oh yeah. Inside bleeding. Well, like, I like. I, I, I saw that with a single stab, like one stab yeah. in the gut, and a person was just like, "Ah, uh, I'm dead." <laughs> Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um so uh, my trope that has pissed me off for years on end is in a it's not so much like what a character does in a movie it's a movie itself when we get to the end of a movie and there is just a flashback of the movies we've seen of the movie oh, yeah. we've seen it drives yeah. me insane it's ruined good movies for me yeah where it's like where hey by the way like, hey in case you can't in case you don't have attention span for an hour and a half <laughs> yeah drives me insane um or me. when i brought that question up on twitter someone was like oh shit or when people have memories of movie of things that happened to not them they weren't even oh, there yeah. for it and they're having a flashback yeah. about it uh, or touch, i like to like, when uh this happens in sports movies a lot when people are like like say Rocky is watching his fight with Apollo on a TV, but he's watching scenes from the movie. He's not yeah, watching yeah. like footage from ESPN. It doesn't look like a, you know what I mean? It's like clearly like 
was there a cameraman in the ring with you? How are you? How do you <laughs> have this footage? Like, in the world of your movie, how do you have this? They do that a lot with sports movies too. Yeah, they just like put it on the screen. It's like I saw that from my <laughs> That's point of like view. Like just a shot from the movie. <laughs> They've gotten a little smarter with. I remember Rocky Balboa was like the first one I remember being like. They tried to make like his fight look like if you were watching HBO boxing. Yeah, yeah some of us. But then, but Brian said they used just footage of the old movie to be like, look at that fight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they did it in Creed. They showed. Uh, the Rocky and yeah, Apollo I fight. When, I think when he's shadow boxing with uh, Apollo on the wall, it at least feels like it's back from the ring. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel like it's in the you know in the mix yeah. with him. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that was so, a minor one. If you no, nah, man, know. it's it's a really, like more like a nitpick than anything. It's uh, the flashbacks. I would even love to give an example of a movie, but I literally see movies and just go, "Oh, I hate it. I, I can't." Well, even I, I, doesn't Rocky? I mean, I don't know if it's on the, the Rockies same. do them, but like Rocky. They, I mean, we fucking. We were talking about Blinded by Light. They do that in Blinded by Light. Yeah. But oh, just like recap really? the whole movie at the very end. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty, like midway, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Oh, because so I, I should yeah, just I... start that movie about halfway in. Oh, no, I'll miss the Springsteen songs then. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, yeah. yeah. I remember when you went on that date with that girl. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I also hate when, like, a movie does a big info dump. Like, I remember... Uh, you guys remember the first Silent Hill movie? Oh, yeah. It wasn't terrible. No. It was okay. But I remember it bumming me out because they just, like, right at the big, like, the, in the third act, they just, like, dumped the whole story. I was like, why the, wasn't this yeah. parsed out through the – this? that's just kind of a bad movie. Like, that's not even a trope. That's just me complaining about a bad movie, I guess. Bad movies but do it's like, that. The, the story was interesting if you would have pieced it out to me throughout and kind of like given me something, but to just dump it all on me right before the ending, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I that, guess. That could, have been one of those, uh, that could have been one of those video game adap- adaptations that would have been great if they didn't do something like that. <laughs> yeah, it was solid. Like yeah. it was doing it, going in a decent direction. But Horrific. Yeah, it did. Wah, wah. <laughs> do you remember that terrible movie, um, game over or something like that where like they were like went inside the video game to like fight or it's it's kids controlled inmates that were on death row no and different movie oh you're talking about uh, you're talking about the game the gerald butler game movie are you talking about the the workaholics movie no i'm talking about a movie with frankie muniz in it dude Uh, it was a it was a horror movie Oh, so, oh yes, 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 yes. So you I gotta do. cut around. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't remember what he's talking about, but it was I don't a think horror it's called. Movie. It's it was not called like, Game Over, though. It's called like Red Rose or something. Stay alive. About stay, Red, stay alive. Yeah. Stay alive. It's about a woman with like red. Okay. Yeah, the Red Rose. It's a real like urban legend surrounding a video game, and they're all in. It sucked. You don't have to. Speaking of out. Game Over. We got a game this week <laughs> brought to us by our, yeah, our own Yeah, we're staying tight, guys. I want to oh. break up the... All right, so uh, I was watching Mr. Sunday Movie. Shout out to Sunday. Uh, a much he's a great better YouTuber. YouTube channel than this one. Why are you even here? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Go over there. Tell he's them that we sent by you. by Warby Parker. Tell them that be. we sent you. Uh, yeah, just so... in the, go into the comments of his video and tell them that we sent you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he had a game where he read a review, uh, to his co-host and the co-host had to guess what movie was being reviewed, but he selected actual critics. So I went into letterbox and went for user reviews. Um, I searched for movies that I liked and then I just filter for the half star. So all of these reviews are half star uh, reviews of movies I consider good movies. Um, so I'm gonna review. I'm gonna read the review, and I try to pick ones that are either funny, but all of them have to have like at least a hint of what the fuck the movie is, because a lot of them were like, "This movie is boring." <laughs> so what the fuck? What the fuck are you gonna do with that? <laughs> so um, it was Jaws, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Curious case um, of Benjamin Button. Yeah. So. Uh, I said good movies, Joe. Uh, so the the game is going to be TJ, Joe, and Brian. I'm going to say good day, mate, after I finish reading the review. 
Uh, just a tribute to our shrimp in the Barbie, Mr. Sunday Movie. And just say your name and whoever I heard first. Sunday's a bloody legend, right? <laughs> hey, yeah. Oh, all right, boy. Um, let's get to it. Um, so uh, I'm going to start with an easy one. I feel I feel like you're going to get it real quick. So just so you're in the flow of it. They defeated their villain with a dance off. Fuck out of here. Miss me with that cringe shit, fam. Good, Ryan. Mate. <laughs> Brian. Motherfucker. Galaxy, uh, Gardens of the Galaxy? Yeah. Wait till he says it all. I, yeah, I'm sorry. Man. I was just, I was, I was ready. I think it was just I'll... a delay on his camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. I feel like Brian's going to get this one again, but terrible film. Bears can't talk. Also, bears can't go to prison. Good day, mate. TJ. Paddington 2. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good fucking movie, guys. <laughs> I almost said the the bear movie, Country Bears. All right. Did, they go, did anybody go to jail on that one? Uh, cops were chasing him. Uh, all, right. all right. Do you know what's worse than bitchy women? Unfunny, gross-out humor, and cliches. All that stretched out for two fucking hours. Good Joe. day, mate. Joe. Ryan. So I'm going to give it to Joe. He it was kind of there. Bridesmaids? Yeah. <laughs> you know what, though? He's right about Bridesmaids being too long. It <laughs> is. Yeah. It is fucking long. It's a good movie, but it's too long. <laughs> All right. Crappiest film I've ever seen. I wish this movie was invisible. Good day, mate. Joe. Joe. The Invisible Man. Mm, TJ. Yeah. Oh fuck! I thought it was gonna be Hollow Man. <laughs> I was no, that was a like, but that would be an honest review. It would have to be a movie. Yeah. Get to remember, it's movies okay. that Yusef like. It's not like he's ever gonna be like, "Oh, Hollow Man was good." What did they say about that? <laughs> 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 now I'm picturing Yusef just being like, "What? Oh, what are my favorite movies? Oh, Hollow Man, definitely. I hope nobody talks shit about Hollow Man. <laughs> nobody better say some shit about Hollow Man. Fuck that." All right, oh, Ryan's pick. If you like to get stoned before watching a movie, this shouldn't be your movie because it will suck all the joy from your bus. Only redeeming quality is staring at Ryan Gosling's face. Name that movie. Joe. Yeah? Um, it's like face. Three. Brian. Yeah. Brian. Blade Runner 2049. Yeah, oh, baby. Did you watch the Honest Trailer today, you sucker? It actually, that it wasn't a terrible I, Honest I, Trailer. It was one of the better ones in the last couple. I didn't know they did it. I was kind of uh, surprised they did Blade Runner 24. It's kind of a weird pick for them. Yeah, I didn't know they did that. I guess that. because no movies are coming out, it's hard. <laughs> I was going to say Place Beyond the Pines. Um, yeah, the fucking movie is awesome, though. Uh, but Blade that's not a reason for it. It's it is only super an hour, so I can see why somebody would be like, this is a bummer. I thought I was getting high and watching a cool sci-fi movie, and this shit made me <laughs> sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the game is tight. Uh, two, 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 one. Brian and Joe are tied. Uh, next one. What a terrible, utterly useless piece of shit. It's just fucking drumming, you nerd. Good day, mate. Joe. Yep. Whiplash. Drumline. Drumline. <laughs> Drumline. <laughs> Drumline. <laughs> Fuck you. Hollow man. God, imagine if that's so, that mad at drum, a drumline or a hollow man. Next time you do this game, you gotta do movies TJ likes. Uh, no one will get it. Do them. movies that ha that have earned their half star review. <laughs> <laughs> a gnome named Norm. Yeah. <laughs> hey, shut up. All right. So uh, Joe Gates the lead, takes the lead. All right. This is just so fucking bad. What is wrong with John Travolta? Why is he only dancing once? And I hate the poster. It looks like a cheap, old-fashioned movie. I should, I could have made one better with palm trees. Good day, mate. TJ. Joe. TJ. Pulp Fiction. Yeah. 
What does there, palm baby. trees have there. to do with Pulp Fiction? I have no fucking clue, man. <laughs> also, I think Shorty could have been a good poster. guess for that, too. He's only he's complaining that Travolta danced once. I couldn't stop laughing at that. I don't know why. It's like, it's like, I tune into John Travolta movies for dancing. It's like, oh, I guess this guy's not a Look Who's Talking fan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, Travolta dance has a little dance in every movie he's ever done. Just a little, a little wiggle. Like My that. favorite John Travolta movie is Carrie. It's like his worst performance. It's so good. Grease. I love Grease. <laughs> the fanatic, guys. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I don't understand at all why everyone likes this movie so much. It was literally two hours of some guys farting and jerking off and without any understandable dialogue. And then ending made no fucking sense. Joe. Oh, fuck. Joe. TJ. If, if anybody else, I'm going to give you your last go. TJ. Farting, pooping, and unsensible dialogue. The Revenant. No. Brian, you got a guess? Um, can I hear it again? Oh, so long. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't understand at all why everyone likes this movie so much. It was literally two hours of some guys farting and jerking off with no understandable dialogue. And that ending made no sense. Swiss Army Man? No. Huh. Yeah. The Lighthouse. Yeah, baby. Yes. All right. All right. Stupid fucking movie. I thought this was good movies. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. <laughs> no, it's movies that I like. <laughs> um, so, so Joe has the lead, and we have one, two, three movies left. If Brian gets two, or TJ I gets close two, the gap, you tie. And we go to the tiebreaker. So either Brian or TJ can tie, or Joe so if gets Joe one gets one more, he wins though. So if we just shut up, we can end this game. Is what you're saying, <laughs> yeah, baby? So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you one of mine. I don't understand. I understand it got artistic and satirical merit, or whatever. But lads, it's so boring, and maybe it's good to laugh at it, but. It got nothing else. Also, Robert De Niro as the plumbing Batman is a legend. Good day, mate. Brian. Brian. It's Brazil. No, TJ. Yeah. TJ. Brazil. Oh, I told you it was one of mine. Um, all right. So next one. I thought maybe you meant you reviewed the movie on Letterboxd yeah. and then told we're telling us your own bad review. No, no. <laughs> I've never used that, sh- that, that website. Uh, I use it every day. So, <laughs> next one, if Brian gets it. Uh, I'm in this. I'm in if this. If TJ gets it, uh, everybody could just, somebody could just tie, and then I'm just going to leave it at tie because I'm not going to look for another review. All right. I'm sick of gay people going so hard for shitty movies shot in pretty places just because we barely have any gay movies at all. This is still bad. And being gay does not make it any better. Good day, mate. Brian. Joe? Brian. Call me by your name. Yeah, baby. Damn it. I know. I fucking know Yusuf too well to be like, yeah, that's what he's going to go with. I was going to say La 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 Land. <laughs> no, I'm not even kidding. Not La La Land just joke. is gay. It's not about gay <laughs> people. Though. Yeah. I never really finished it to realize. Uh, <laughs> it just is gay. Fuck <laughs> good. So this one is just for Brian and Joe because I'm not gonna get a fucking I'm not gonna do a tie. So Brian and Joe are tied. This is a tiebreaker. That's cool. Leave me out. And this you is self out by sucking. <laughs> and this is and this is like like be quick with it. The shark reminded me of Kristen Dunst with her little tiny castle teeth. My favorite part was the credits. So boring. Good day, mate. Brian. Brian. It's Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking. Oh. Hey. Oh, God. All right. What the end I of love that? that review. I didn't know Chris <laughs> Dunst had tiny castles. It doesn't castle. make any sense because the teeth are great. 
<laughs> Man, dude. Yeah, and also, like, what does tiny castle teeth even mean? Yeah, <laughs> what a phrase. She has really bad teeth, and they overlap each other in Spider-Man. That Sam talking, really- about, talking about bad teeth, how about we talk yeah. about those clown teeth? Oh, yes. All right, guys. Let's talk about bad the- segues. Let's talk about that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, buddy. It's episode 49. It's my pick. And uh, I think I've been giving you guys some pretty good picks lately. So I thought I'd go back into my shit show bag and uh, bring out some alien abduction movies or alien movies because of the whole UFO thing and the court. Oh, can't say the word. The, C, the Q word. But I uh, played a game. Brian won, I believe, and we got... Oh, yeah, because I'm a winner. Kill the clowns from outer space. And uh, two of our buddies in this fucking podcast have not seen this show, and Brian, first-timers. Um, there's not much of a plot to this. Uh, basically, it's a bunch of young adults. There's a, uh, a meteor that hits, or an asteroid, depending on how we, scientific way you want to say it. Um, Haley's Comet. Haley's Comet, for sure. Uh, Haley's Comet, yes, yes. This with two L's and no I. Um, Halley's Comet. Uh, so basically that hits and it ends up being a circus tent and they are killer clowns that are aliens. And, and other than that, it's a circus tent shaped spaceship. Correct. And then it has a whole core that goes, guys, Brian, I want to start with Brian and Joe first impressions. Cause Yusef already know with y'all, but, uh, Brian, first impressions of this movie. I've been waiting for this. Oh no, no. I'm, uh, so I sat down with this one. You guys know I love my 80s horror. It's weird. Like, this is just a weird blind spot for me. I don't know what it was. I always knew this one as more of, like, a punchline than anything else. But, uh, so I'm sitting down to watch it, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, man, you know what? I really like this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, I fu- I'll tell you what. Here's the thing. Okay. The clown, clown uh, like, designs, great. Um, all the little, like kind of clown nuances all the bits uh the fuck i love the shit with he rides up in the little tricycle and punches dude's head off amazing yes. i love the shadow puppets amazing the balloon I love the popcorn oh, shadow it's like their babies and they turn yep. into little awesome oh, all that's great i love the, the reason i think animal. this movie the reason i think this movie is not a is like not because like it's kind of a cult classic but it's also still kind of regarded as bad which i i don't i don't get that but here's my thing. I think it's the actors. It's yeah. the performances that hold this movie back. If this movie – and I'm not saying you can't have like oh, bad or over the top. They're just the wrong kind. They don't have – whatever it is, they don't have it. The like the lead guy, the guy who's yes. her boyfriend who's the lead? sort who's of the lead? but ends up being cucked by the cop. And then they're like a three-way at the end and yeah. he's hugging the cop. It's so bizarre, but literally the first couple minutes when they're investigating the tent the first All time, the tent space, I'm like, I can't wait for this guy to die. Because I assumed <laughs> that they were going to kill him off and That's then move on with the girl and the cop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, And I was like, oh, God, I can't wait for this guy to go. And then he's a bad – his acting's not great, but also his character is terrible. The cop – nothing wrong with his character. He's bland action hero character, but the actor is fucking – Bananas bad. He's so <laughs> bad. Like, like unreal. It's You're my so ex-boyfriend. It's like you can't tell me what to do. Doesn't mean I don't still feel about you. Impression, kind of. <laughs> Jeez. And yeah, then the girl that... is had not one but two roles on Seinfeld. She's in two separate episodes. She's the Nazi girl from the limo episode. Oh, she and oh she's, that's where she's, she's from. And she's Poppy's daughter who won't eat the pie. Also. <laughs> oh yeah. Why, why won't you? Why won't you eat the pie? <laughs> so anyway, so my first impressions are positive. This could be a, this would be on the level of like great, like so bad they're good or like even just like bizarre because it really leans into its premise and it goes full bore with all the clown shit. Yeah, but and the it, actor, it really the actor, is because elevated. Because it doesn't have an actor you can get behind and a really like, like if this had... I don't know, fucking Jesse from Nightmare on Elm Street 2, it would be fine. You know what I mean? Because he's like, you can get into that kid. Like, Yeah, I think no I think it's sense. really, really, really carried with the practical effects. That's what oh, yeah. fucking... Well, and the bits, it. the gimmicks, everything clown-related yeah. was clearly very like thought out and it's funny and interesting and in its own kind of like... <clears throat> and like, the guys are doing bits in the clown suits in different scenes. That's all funny. Like I said, I really just think if this movie had a lead you could like, it, yeah. would, it would be right up there on the level of like your cult classics. How about you, Joe? 
Oh, I've I ordered the Blu-ray. I fucking love this. <laughs> um, the actors didn't bother me. That actually added to its charm. Um, I, I mean, mean, like I this guy watches a lot of Nick Cage movies, so he's. I mean, there was a. This movie was always uh, so. I've always been like a really big fan of you. Look at these like bad cult movies. Are so bad it's good. Cold movies of Troll Two, right? So it like it would always someone would always say like, "Do you see Killer Clowns of Outer Space? You like Troll Two? Yeah. Now I don't think it's made like Troll Two because Troll Two is not competently made. Right. right? This like, one rises above movie. that level just with its effects and stuff. Dude, this sure. one's just a like Brian said. This one's just a really well made movie with bad actors, and that's what brings it down. Oh, yeah. uh, but holy fuck, I had so much fun with this. I sent you guys a message in uh, our chat, and I said. It's like an episode of it's like an extended episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Like it has that kind of scares to it. It's not yeah. you know, there's nothing there's nothing scare to it. Oh yeah, my but nine year old can fully watch yeah, this. No, no problem. But, but then it reminded me of every dream sequence from Rugrats. <laughs> I think it's also yeah. because the music of the like the score was very was like all original, incredible. It was original, incredible. But it reminded me of that Mark's. Mother. It has that thing of a great '80s horror movie where it has its own theme song, yeah. like a, it has yeah. its own Killer Clowns rock Killer song. Clowns. I, I don't know why well, yeah, that shit reminded me of the Rugrats. Maybe it was the music, and then like the way the they weird did the distorted things. faces. That's much yeah, like yeah. the Rugrats. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just loved. I just like. I absolutely had so much fun with it. Um, the puppet thing got me. I loved how they weren't that just creepy pedophile guy. <laughs> they weren't just like disguised to look as clowns too. They like were. I have notes, and one of those is the pedophile. Yeah, that's true. Uh, although I was just talking straight about the movie, I think this is the first time a cop in a movie has ever just been like, "Oh yeah, I believe what you're saying. Let's go. Let's go check it out." Right, check right. It out. Just, like, take yeah, but I think it's because it's the ex girlfriend. It. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, it's got it was, some of uh, the best uh, intros to, like, the clowns, too, where, like, when they're going into the town and you have, like, the one clown comes in the scene and you have the one do the Michael Myers sit-up and it has, like, the dun it dun it and they just all come in a frame in their different sizes and different looks walking into town. It, like, has, like, these really well-set-up shots. And, yeah, the, like, these guys, the Chiodos brothers who directed this, have been doing – puppetry and like stan winston style creations for hollywood forever they did critters um they did the puppets on world team america the animatronic this. clown heads look great they're oh, they're so, so cool good. they're you i mean saying they're also, limited um, in their motion a little bit but it's fine they never try to overdo it like as far as make them talk or give speeches you know what it reminds that's another me? thing i love about it is they never try to explain the clowns everything you learn about the clowns you just learn by watching them you learn it the way the characters learn it you just pick up on it by what you see and i love that cotton candy like all their little gadgets and stuff are so cool i love the thing they're driving through town and sucking up the uh the you know the cocoon people cotton candy and they get sucked up into that machine it looks like something from dr seuss they're just like driving it down the (laughs) middle of the road clowns are pitching people out the window and shit it's great well it's got like what it's also like the uh you are the actors are bad but you react the same way the actors are reacting. Like, cotton candy cocoons. The deliveries are so <laughs> fucking bad. But you're at the same time, you're like, oh, oh yeah, no, we got to. They're, sh- they're shooting popcorn? <laughs> it's like, you gotta yeah. talk about, We got to talk about the old man in the woods, though. Yes. Like, he's doing uh, his, like, full 1925s farmer yeah, accent and like, acting. He's like an able. Uh, he reminded me of, uh, you guys, I don't know if anybody here is creep show fans, but Jordy Verrill, like when he's for, when the first, when the, when the asteroid falls, he's like, oh, we're going to go dig it up and get rich. He's like an old uh, prospect. Dude, well, Brian, and he's like, old. his, his aspirations are, he's like, oh buddy, there's going to be helicopters, hot dogs, hot dogs. airplanes, <laughs> and tacos. I is actually that's, like, oh, that's like, like your, that's like your end goal. <laughs> who, tacos, tacos, and just air uh, I want my <laughs> front yard to be a circus. Like what? <laughs> that's what you want? <laughs> I thought it was a shocking and scary one. Like, Brian, you're old. You're from like 1953. Two <laughs> questions for you. Do you remember Fraggle Rock? Absolutely. He's the old guy who owns the build, like the house that. The oh, with the dog, he's the guy. Yes, I believe so. I'm not 100, percent but I'm like 89. percent And then also, <laughs> because you're old and you did that, did was there a lookout point? Is that a real thing that people did? Um, 
Not, like my town didn't have a lookout point per se. I mean, as world. far as I'm concerned, every dark parking lot was lookout point. Uh, yeah, so baby. was every movie yeah, theater. Like, like anywhere yeah. you could try to finger bang somebody was lookout point. Like I don't know what else. You know, <laughs> we had one that was like a pretty big hill, considering for like Puerto Rico, which was an which led to an old retirement home. Like we were just a bunch of old people dying in their beds and <laughs> further down the road were teenagers fucking like that was <laughs> you know what though when i'm old i want to be able to look out my window and think the teenagers are fucking like yeah. that's what i want to think about like, yeah yeah didn't, didn't you didn't you want to just like fucking if i was the the girl and you go into a spaceship and your boyfriend is trying to rationalize it into a can a cotton candy factory <laughs> I would have just dumped him right there. I was like, you know what? One, We're over. This one, is over. Cotton candy isn't wet, nor does it ever need to be dried. It's made. And there's no factory. For, I mean, no. there's probably a factory, but not in the middle of the fucking woods either. And then, and then she, she's... It's like a factory, but there's no parking lot or anything. You know what I mean? Like, where did it come from? I think, from? like, the one thing about this, like, ta the one takeaway about this movie is... I guess there's a story, but what happens is, like, you have... An intro to these characters, they show you the clowns, and then it's like 35 minutes of like different clown kills and different yeah. like situations where they're running into just random people you don't know about, but it's just it's, it's that, that's what makes it fun. It's and the, the longest part of the gremlins. Right, oh yeah, yeah, that's a good it's point. The middle part of gremlins where it's just chaos yeah. around the town for most of the yeah. Time. Yeah, cause, yeah, cause there's, uh, there's like uh, all right, so well, first, we should talk about the cop, like the old cop, because oh, that's Mooney. like a huge... Oh, oh. The guy, that guy's voice... I think he's the only actor that has like, any actual credit. Because he was credit. Rupert Thorne on Batman the Animated Series, and so like when he talks, all I hear is like a rough gangster, and that his face doesn't match that voice. <laughs> I think I think like he was... He's been in like a lot of older things. He was in Animal like, House. He's yeah, he's like the Animal only House. actor they got that had any type of credits behind him, and just were like, all right, play... Probably yourself, basically. Yeah. But the best basically, part about that, you're yeah. cop, you know. I <laughs> know. Part about that cop I oh my bad, Joe. Oh no, I was just saying I know a well, Sergeant Mooney, but I know a Officer Mooney Ooh. who was a lot younger than that guy. But I was laughing each time. Well, it's like they do but, that scene where he's like, you might be talking about that now, where like he foreshadows his death. Yeah. He's like, oh, he takes that whole thing where he talks about himself and he slides him and he's like, don't make a dummy out of me. And the camera yeah. just freezes on his face for a minute. And it goes away. You're like, but I kind of, I kind of wanted like his death to be more gory and, and slower in a sense that him, the character actually goes like, oh, I fucked up. I should have believed. <laughs> I should have believed you that. You wanted to get that moment of realization out of him. You wanted yeah. to have that. Yeah. That little oh, bit of closure. And also, and also I'm very self-aware of because I do a lot, I've done a lot of road trips, and especially when I drove down from Ohio to Texas, like I drove through a lot of like shady small towns, and I'm very aware of like that type of cop existing. And every Hell time yeah. I pass through, I pass through like a small town, my ass gets. I'm afraid to get days. pulled over by those people, and then I'm not even brown. <laughs> if he yeah. if he spits, if he's walking to your car and does a little before he gets to your door, uh, be worried. At that. Just trouble. drive, just drive. <laughs> yeah, just just yeah. Fucking leave at that point. But yeah, even Joe's trope was in this movie with him, where he gets the clown who's like, "Put me in jail," and he tries to clock him in the back of the head with a flashlight, and <laughs> he just spins around on him. Like that moment, like it's not like Brian. You said you would show this to uh, Harrison, but like it's not scary. But those those stupid little moments like that have like. There no, is one joke. moment that's – I tell you, I thought the moment that was scary was in the clowns luring the little girl away from her family. That was, yes. so that was creepy. That pedo also, I hate that girl's mom. That little girl is sitting there quietly like, mm, and her mom's like, now sit there and sit still and don't eat. She's like, man, your, your kid's being you fine. You got to eat everything. Such a bitch. I thought this scene was so weird of like the telegram scene and the woman was like so happy. The older woman was so happy the clown was out yeah. the door. It's like, they look evil. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, that's not a singing <laughs> telegram. That's a fucking crazy, disturbing looking mask at best. Oh, no. The, the scene, but you're right. The scene with the little girl actually is like, they made that is creepy. It's, it's creepy. How is nobody? Music is creepy. 
But then contrast with that with the scene where the guy just watches him tear up his, like, drugstore. He's just like, ooh. Every, like, <laughs> it's just a series of, like, That's... them knocking stuff over uh, and then cut to uh... him being like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, even uh, we bring these guys up, uh, the Terenzi brothers, uh, the guys in the fucking ice cream truck with How, the two. Oh, they fuck. They fuck those clowns, right? They fuck. Oh, absolutely. They fuck they they did. Did. But oh, also, like, that's that's another moment when I was like, see, if you'd have cast somebody actually like funny in these roles, this would be a lot better. These guys fucking suck. They're not <laughs> funny. Plan. They're they're all they're both. They both look old and have like weird bad skin. They like look like a couple of fucking meth addicts. Like, you know that's what I mean? That's why I asked TJ. That's why I asked TJ. How old? Are, how old are they fucking supposed they, to be? They literally because, in all the description it just says young adult. Because it yeah, says like, it's, they it's said like, he said that they're high school children. <laughs> you know who they need. What needed. was their plan? Sorry, T, uh, Joe. I want to ask something. Uh-huh. What was their plan with the girls in the beginning? Like hop them up on sugar. And that will make them horny. That's that I was think they're, they're, my thing. Thing of, they're talking about wanting to get girls, but like, what kind of girls do you get with an ice cream chuck? Children. I think these dudes were like way out of it. You're talking about the pedo guy, yeah. but I think these guys were. I would be more questionable with these. These dudes are predators for I think sure. They were doing that. They like you said, they got that, that bad like, skin. They just look fucking yeah. sickly. They were trying to <laughs> do that, like. Uh, uh, bigger girl easy girl type of a thing like just get my ice cream they'll probably give it up because the girls were a little they were they were made to look a little bit bigger than probably those girls didn't want to even take off their shirts (laughs) (laughs) take us home right now then she just deep throating a popsicle Uh, my instant thing was like what kind of girl do you get with an ice cream truck on an 11 year old (laughs) but talking about talking talking about taking off your shirt who the fuck goes like, oh my I just found a spaceship. I know people have de- I saw a dead a dead body. I just left my boyfriend, my Trope. ex-boyfriend Trope. go go to a mountain and probably die. I'm not gonna see them, but you know what? Time I'm gonna take, take a the shower. Long, the longest shower in the <laughs> fucking world. No, I have to say <laughs> I looked away. Did I miss nudity? Was, was there actual she... nudity in this? No, no, no. no they didn't. Okay. Okay. No. So I'm just I making fun thinking. of the fact that she was taking a shower for 45 minutes of the entire movie. Like they keep showing things happening and they cut to her like <laughs> <laughs> And then yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. cleared out half the town while she's just like showering up. <laughs> yeah, just showering up, man. God damn it! Enough time for the the popcorn to incubate and make fucking babies. Like yeah. that's that's how long that long she takes her. Yeah, it's like I, and, I, and I, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I, I, I just <laughs> wanted to mention it while Brian was talking about the Papa Show. But before he said the Papa Show, like the dude just came up and punched a head off his shoulders. Yeah, and just the one black guy in the entire movie just goes, "Damn!" <laughs> <laughs> I love that dude. He's like, "Oh, should have let, should have let, should let him ride his bike." <laughs> oh, I love that dude. Ride his bike. <laughs> I, I was, yeah, I love that's like a, definitely a hundred percent the strongest part of this movie is like they clearly came up with the idea of the of the alien clowns and clowns using like like clown tropes to kill well, people. One, and I did like they even addressed like... because I had that thought too. I was like, this is cool, but why would they use our clown aesthetic? Like why would their whole society be built around our idea of what a clown is? And then the girl addresses that like I mean, it's dumb, but at least they, they point it out. They're like, well, maybe this is where we got the idea of clowns from these yeah, creatures yeah. or whatever. And I was like, all right, hey, you know, you've made the effort. You tried. I'll give it to you. You know, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to be much smarter than that. <laughs> we'll see, it's kind of like, like, like what we were talking earlier. Like, this is on the on the other side of weird. Just give us one liner of right. explanation well, and like, just uh, go with it. Two of my favorite, well, two, well, two of the most creative kills using like clown type of like things is the mimed car where he runs a dude off the road where he's just oh, yeah. by himself, which is his his shoes are his lights. That one, and then my favorite one is when they figure out that the clowns moved their ship to the actual carnival amusement park, and the cop just kind of like walks up on him as like seventeen of them are getting out of the car. He's like, "What you gonna do with those pies?" And they're just like, <laughs> "Oh." <laughs> and they just crank with pies. And well, they all keep getting out. It's like there's a bunch of good clown bits right there all together. Because yeah. like first they do all the clown car things, so like they keep getting out, and that's funny. And then 
it's just a cut cutaway and a cutback, and then they're all holding pies. There's never like a point where they get out <laughs> pies. They're just all holding them like they just materialize pies in their hand, which I thought was really funny. And, um, and then yeah, they just like with pile it on, and that, and that was melts, a good bit. And then they just it's walk up pies so hard, and the little Joe yeah. just takes a cherry and just puts a giant cherry on top and just keeps walking. It's like yeah, and, and then melt it and down and though. I, go ahead, go ahead, Joe. I, I interrupted just, him enough. <laughs> I was just saying, I just loved when he got back to that, and he was just like melted down with the bone. Yeah, it's yeah, so and then the, that's what I was gonna say. And then the ice cream douches come along, and they touch the thing, and nothing happens to their hands. They're like, yeah, Ugh, it looks like ice cream, and then just lets it go. Like his so sisters you know, just disappeared, just melted the whole you know, hand off. Uh, yeah, I'm mad that they got to survive. Like I, when they died, I was like, "That's appropriate." Some people should die, and then they just pop up at the end. And I'm like, they, sur- they survived the same way that Indiana Jones survived. In his fridge, yeah, that was dumb it's commonly too. known. It's commonly well, you know, known that Steven Spielberg was inspired by Killer Clowns. <laughs> well, you know who I wish? Uh, I mean, it's like 15 years too too late. But you know who'd been great in that ice cream truck row? The Scar Brothers. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, I yeah. can see that. Sure, something yeah. like that would have been good for them. Absolutely. This yep. this whole movie is the Rooster Brothers before the Rooster Brothers were out because you have the Chiodo Brothers, man. These guys have been doing it before the Russos. You know, hey, they've still have a website. They're still kicking. Well, I mean, they got a get- band named after them. A, a fucking pretty popular fucking rock band. Get- so they have. What was the last thing that they did? Was it Team America? That was the last puppet stuff they made. They've done like Ernest Scared Stupid. I get uh, that. They did Dude, the Ernest, Critters. Ernest Scared Stupid has great puppet work. Yeah, yeah they did uh, the newer movie. Critters ones too. They but did all the puppets movie. for the Critters. Shit like that. They did, they're more of like uh, special effects guys than direct. I think this is the only movie they ever directed. Can we talk say, about the ending was... though, where where the cop gets way too friendly with his ex girlfriend and starts kissing <laughs> her head and her shoulders? Well, and, and, then the, do, and then boyfriend runs up and they're hugging. Like, oh, yeah, like, this is like, about yeah. to become a polyamorous relationship, I think. Yeah, they're gonna, you know, spit roast her. I mean, he was really close with those two brothers. Little finger could have something happening. <laughs> he could have been dabbing both ways. But I mean, I think the whole. Do you, okay, watching this movie, Brian and Joe. You get into the whole ending where they get into the the, the um, spaceship and they're going through the whole fucking thing. Did you guys expect to see a King, so- King Kong sized clown as yeah, like a awesome. boss type thing coming? I did not. No, I didn't expect that. Actually, it was no. Yeah. The ending I was, was a little disappointed though. though that he was just a bigger version of the like he could still be defeated the exact same way. So like as soon as they shattered his nose, he was. Like yeah. I, I, I do with like pin? he was cool looking and it was cool that he was so big, but like he was still kind of easily defeated. You know, yeah. I was kind of bummed about that. In just one giant black room, they just obviously just used a person in a suit and camera tricks. Yeah, but it looked great. Oh, I loved yeah. it. Do you know what I loved about the camera tricks and the effects was when they first like revealed when they first noticed it was a spaceship. Like they open a door. And they showed like the shafts and the lightning, and that was yeah. a whole cartoon. Yeah, yeah. It was like a matte painting, was, you know. That was beautiful. I love that. It looked like, like in, in the edits, looked like that. It would be real, and then it also looked like a carnival of its time. Yeah, yeah sure. Well, yeah, it did an awesome job. I mean, um, and the cocoon. I didn't think you briefly mentioned just the cotton candy cocoons was genius yeah. of being able the to balloons. like to oh, show I, it, like actually, like we're hosting dead bodies. That reminds yep. me of the thing that, um, like, when this thing happened, I realized I was, like, fully going to be on board for this movie. Like, despite the fact that I think the act, like, I, I know I, I was shitting on the acting, but I only think that that kept it from being, like, a really well-regarded cult yeah. classic. And yeah. it kept it kind of on the second tier. But overall, I really fucking loved it. And I'll tell you the, mo- the moment that I knew I would be on board was when the clown blows up the fucking... Uh, balloon dog. the first time and he makes the dog and then the dog they're using the dog to track him the balloon animal dog <laughs> yeah. I was like alright yeah this that. is fucking great <laughs> I it's was a... like this is the, that's what I knew they were like fully gonna lean into the clown shit and I was like okay yeah. I'm into it like this Here's isn't just a question. gimmick this is your movie like <laughs> I have you guys watch this on Netflix I assume yeah yeah okay yeah. I have the original DVD um, the one in the beginning where they discover the cotton candy cocoons and they're hiding out. Did you guys see where he takes 
I don't, I don't, I, when I rewatched it earlier, I might have maybe went to the bathroom at this point, but I thought maybe they cut it out. Is there a moment where he pulls a crazy straw out, a clown, and like taps the cotton candy for like a spot? That's in the, that's when they go back to okay. the, yeah, it it's not it in the, the first, it's not okay. when they're in there the first time, it's when I'm they like, go back. Did they fucking cut that out? Because the it's, whole thing it was, was in the there, show. I mean, it was definitely in the movie I saw, and it's okay. a really crazy, crazy draw, I love that, again, like, fully yeah. leaning into the clown thing of, like, even their crazy draw is, like, ridiculously crazy, <laughs> it's like a two foot long crazy I was worried, draw. I was like, why would they cut that out, because, like, the reason they're here is obviously just to feed off us, but it's just Well, so again, crazy. and that's one of those things, too, where, like, there's no, there's never, like, a exposition moment where all of a sudden the girl like wipes off <laughs> some dust from a rune and is like oh, these people they've been coming here for years and blah, I mean they did explains it. the whole backstory a la alien versus from predator what? or some dumb shit we could just like only thing you learn about the clowns is what you learn from watching them and what we they see what it is we couldn't put that scene in because she had to take a fucking bath man <laughs> she was too busy in the back from what it sounded like, it was uh, that literally they gave the uh, what's tr- used to the tro- the chodes. What are their names? Yeah, Chiodos. Chio- Chio- yeah, the Chiodos. <laughs> the Chodes, yeah. Chodes? They, Who's your favorite Chodes. directors? The Chodes? They, uh, they gave them, they were like, hey, you guys have like $3 million. And they just, I think that was the budget, too. And they just used all of it. They were like, great, we are going to play with our practical effects to no yeah. expense. And uh, everything yeah, else is just like, a, we will yeah. cheap out. We'll do people who will use actors who will do the movies for free, and we'll put yeah, everything yeah. into the special effects. <laughs> yeah, their catering was probably like McDonald's or mac and cheese or like <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. The rest was 100 percent for the clowns Spam. and the uh, and can. And it shows. Can. I mean, I, I was think shocked was... how many clown different clown masks they made. I yeah, was like really yeah, surprised. Single, so I don't know this up. I, I saw. I looked it up yesterday when I was looking up facts about the movie. But there's at least eight different designs, and every single one of them has a name and a backstory. Like on, a, like a, I think it's fandoms Wikipedia. Like they have a name and like a like a four sentence backstory about like their certain who they. Oh, are. I'm sure. So like the little green haired one that the guy was like, "Little JoJo, back in town." That didn't really like. That's not his name. I don't know what his fucking name is, but they all have different names. Cool. All you right, guys ready go to into the rain phase. <laughs> Crazy taxi. All right, Brian, Joe, you guys are first. Brian, you go because you guys are first time watchers. Uh, I would probably give this a, a pretty high. I'd probably go like a seven or a seven and a half. Um. And like I said, the only thing holding it back from being like a really great – like if this movie – if you swapped out the people in this movie with the people who are in the 1980s version of The Blob, yeah. like you would have a lot better movie here. You know what I mean? Like they – unfortunately, they, they kind of really drag it down because they're not good and they're not likable. There's not like a lot to get behind there. But – all the fucking clown shit is so good. All the like thought that went into the idea of what the clowns do and what their whole deal is and how they get people and all their different little shticks and gimmicks. Fucking amazing, incredible shit. So good. so good. So like all of it goes, all my seven and a half points goes to that, you know? Yeah. Good. I'll be happy to give this a rewatch though. Yeah. Got Joe. Um, I'm right kind of where with Brian said, but like I, this is a movie like, uh, I, I like we weren't in the queue. I can't. I couldn't wait to like you know like you came over or something like that to have beers with and watch and, and like enjoy. Like it's like a perfect movie for that. Uh, I had so much fun with it. Like I said, I bought the Blu-ray because I want to own it. I don't just want to rely on streaming because how much was the um, Blu-ray? Was it was ten, 10 bucks. bucks. Right? It was yeah. ten bucks, like nine ninety-five or something. Yeah. Um, if it ever goes off Netflix, I'll get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, rate my ratings right along with Brian. I got a seven point eight. Uh, fully enjoyed it. Nice. What about you? I mean, this is like my fifth or sixth time I watching this movie. Is I fucking enjoy it. It's fun. Um, I forgot to plug my beer. I saved it just for here because it kind of reminded me of. Oh shit! Yeah, it does. Like, like the world. We were watching. Um, I give Would it. You imagine that's what the clown home planet kind of looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, I give it like a seven. Damn. 
um, out of ten for sure. <laughs> just so much, so much. Fun. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Mine was seven uh, shadow puppets that eat people. Uh, seven point eight uh, cotton candy bags. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm right there I with you guys. You. I'm gonna give it about a. I'm, I'm up there. I'm giving it like an eight point three Pooh Bears. You know, <laughs> oh Pooh Bear, that yeah, right? That Pooh Bear. Where's my Pooh Bear? Yeah, my bad. I would love to go back and average our movies. I bet this one came in pretty high because we're looking at like a high sevens for yeah. an average I between feel, the four I of us. Is, I bet this I beat this out like I just beat out some classics. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, where can we find you guys? Uh, Joe, where can we find you, bud? No, baby. Uh, I, I hey, hey, hold have on, something. hold on. Oh, what, what, happened? what happened? What happened? What happened? We've got terrible trivia, oh, yeah, baby. Right. We're getting ready for our fiftieth episode. You're not yes. cutting me off. This Sorry. is happening. You thought we were done? Hell no. You should have started a little earlier if you didn't want an hour and a half show. This is happening. <laughs> so usually when we play terrible trivia, I assign each. I, they don't know what movie it's going to be, but I assign everybody a movie. We play a little crappy trivia, and I like randomly decide when we stop and who wins, and then we pick the movie. I had three movies ready, just like I always do, but then I was informed that it's our 50th episode. So I came up with a movie that came out 50 weeks ago, a movie that came out 50 months ago, and a movie that came out 50 years ago, and I assigned each one to one of our fighters, and we are going to come up with a next movie based on that. So here we go. 50th episode extravaganza starts right now. Okay. Uh, We'll start with Joe. Joe, who was the leading actress in the 2004 movie Ella Enchanted? Oh, Anne Hathaway. Yeah, very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, Yousef, Yousef, this one's for you. Which adventure movie is about the life of Bruce Wayne? Now, this movie, now they give you all, they give you multiple choices here, but two of the choices they give you aren't Batman movies. And one of them's a Batman movie. So it seems too easy to give you the choices. So I'm going to ask you, which adventure movie is about the life of Bruce Wayne? <laughs> what? Batman Begins? Yeah, that's right. It's Batman oh, Begins. Yeah. <laughs> People at home might not understand. Terrible Trivia is a game that – it's a $5 trivia game I got from Big Lots. The 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 – uh, questions are poorly written and poorly asked. Um, each card has usually a true or false or a multiple choice, but they're all either super easy or like totally <laughs> nonsensical. So, the life I've been that around, around. Okay. That's how I kind of either see if everybody's answering them right, and then I pick somebody who misses one, or if everybody's answering them wrong, I pick somebody who gets one right. So we so just go around and slide to side. <laughs> I would have got that one wrong so bad. All right, TJ. Jesus. Finish this movie title about Stephen Hawking. The blank of everything. Uh, that's the guy in the beep boop chair, right? Yep. <laughs> the guy in the beep boop chair. Oh, the theory of everything. The theory of everything. That's right. That's right. All right, Joe, we're back to you. Joe, who's a Shrek in the movie Shrek fall in love with? Yona. How are you going to ask him the one movie he fucking is obsessed hey, with? Hey, I'm just going, I'm just asking the, the, the non-true or false questions on the card. I'm sorry that terrible trivia is terrible. Is that your complaint? The terrible trivia is terrible? That's the guy in the Star Trek uh, chair. <laughs> okay, Yousef. Who defends the humans against the vampires in New Moon? <laughs> I know this. <laughs> yeah, this is easy. Oh, the the werewolf, uh, the shirtless guy. Uh, Typically, uh, they say the wolf Jacob. pack, but I feel like I'll give it. I can give yeah, it to that's you. Good. Yeah, yeah. Say that's Jacob. True. Jacob. Cool. In the wolf. I just as, I just assumed. <laughs> all right, all right. We're back, to TJ. TJ, this is for you, man. Great. Which birds are left in the care of Jim Carrey in a 2011 family yeah. comedy? Joe. No, it's not his Um That doesn't have Zoe Deschanel in it. Which type of which birds are left in the care of Jim Carrey? Birds, they can't even fly, man. It's it's a a penguins. 
It's pissed impoverished penguins. That's right. Yeah. Oh damn. All right. Oh, it's keep, it's got to keep going. Joe. Joe. Yeah. Who did Johnny? Right, so Depp whoever misses. Whoever misses. <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> this might be it because this is hard because this is asking for an, a specific name. All right. Who did Johnny Depp play in Finding Neverland? Oh, um, he played the dude who wrote Peter Pan. You don't know his name, though? If I gave you three names, do you think you could guess his name? Yeah. All right. Is it A, Mr. Snow, B, J.M. Barry, or C, Arthur Conan Doyle? J.M. Barry? It's J.M. Barry. He gives it right, guys. <laughs> You're going to skip me. I, I'm, tapping, I'm, I'm tapping out. <laughs> no, we're doing one more round. Okay. Yousef, what animated movie is based on the Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen? Frozen. Yeah, it's Frozen. TJ, who played Princess Aurora in the 2014 film Maleficent? Oh, wow. Uh, She's blonde. I'll give you that. Uh, I think her name is Lily Collins? No, it was Elle Fanning. Oh, Elle that's Fanning. Cinderella, All right, we get so to that. TJ takes our first miss. I should technically go another round and just make sure. But let, you know what? I, just for the sake of brevity, let's see. What did TJ give us? TJ, I had assigned you 50 weeks, just a little under a year ago from our 50th episode. And the movie that came out in May of 2019 is Detective Pikachu. <laughs> so we're watching Detective Pikachu, you guys. Yes. I own it. For our 50th episode, Detective <laughs> Pikachu. Uh, the other choices, just so you guys know, for 50 months, it was 10 Cloverfield Lane. Oh, nice. And oh, for so. 50 years, it was the original MASH, the movie, not the TV show. Oh, wow. God, it was Okay. Cool. So we're watching Detective Pikachu, guys. How do you feel about that? I love it's it. Cool. That's yeah. cool. That's it's a cool. movie. I think we're going to have a discussion about I, I imagine some of our topics will probably have something to do with video game movies, if I had to guess. Oh, yeah. That's actually a good idea. Mm -hmm. yeah, find out and see. All right, boys. Uh, so where can everybody find you? Ha, ha suck it, TJ. I took your thing. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are on Flyer State of Film YouTube right now. You guys can find me at TJ Dex on Twitter. We got a bracket dropping tomorrow. Well, tomorrow, but you guys, fuck it. We're good. Regardless. We got you this, it'll be out. Check it out. Yeah, flybys. We got tons of shit coming, guys. Enjoy. Yousef. Why I love movies dot com. Joe. Uh, I actually have something to plug this week. Uh, you can find me at Chandango One. But more importantly, point. more importantly, there will be a link in the description to purchase a uh, "May Science Be With You" shirt to yeah. support Direct Relief to help our get our great uh, healthcare workers uh, PPE also, and you, supplies. Brian. Oh yeah. Um, yes. I actually did have to go into my first ICU room with a patient who was suspected to have COVID the other day. I work in a private office. I'm not a hero, guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, please uh, please consider supporting that shirt if you made it to this episode this long or just donating. Uh, if you're not I, one of those people who bails out when people start to do their plugs like I am when I listen to podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> Like, we should start doing this. If you got some important, break. you know what, TJ, splice this in at the front. Let, like, he's got an important plug. Splice this in. Slide let people know there. to buy that I'll, I'll shirt. The they, they tune out. They do. <laughs> oh, and I'm on Twitter at Herskillies. You can find me there all the time. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.